Eve. Hello, you sexy motherfuckers. Are you ready to talk about dick again today? Woo! <laughs> no, I'm joking. Today we are actually bringing back a guest that has already been on the podcast because you guys loved her so much. And I do listen to you, even though... I've lost a lot of followers <laughs> through talking about sex a little bit too much. But you know what? It's fine. Because one thing I've learned in life is that if you're yourself authentically, the real people that love you for who you are stick. And the ones that don't can get fucked. All right? It's the mo motivational quote for the day. On today's podcast, we have my best friend, Nicole O'Brien, everyone! Woo! <laughs> oh, it's been a while. I know, I'm excited to be back here. This feels like I've got deja vu. Yeah. That last episode we recorded, my God, did I air dirty laundry? <laughs> you did. I can't believe I said half the shit I said. What was you scared about? Like, I, I just airing? aired like, obviously, shit about stalking my ex. Yeah, you went pretty savage. I did go savage. I clearly just feel so comfortable because two of us are literally we know each other inside out like yeah. we know everything I've about shaved each other your ass before. literally we did talk about that on the I first know. episode Chloe did shave my bum when I was going to get the ride and I was drunk so literally but there's no filter I didn't no cut the flap off no you didn't which is so good that's I actually think like that's really good I don't mind doing one on one courses I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> Bit of extra money on the side. I do not mind doing one-on-one -on -one courses on how to shave your best friend's ass when she's just about to get the dick. All right? I don't mind. I'm dead. People... 50 pounds an hour. I think that's quite good. 120 then. 120 an hour. We're up in it. Uh, no, 50. 60. We'll go with 60. That's, yeah, it's a good price. Yeah. Good price. But yeah, so I, I feel like I'm excited to be back here. Have you got any... Oh, see, I, I mean, it's, it's weird because we are together literally like every day. So yeah. I know everything. But... Yeah. I know mean, there's some things that we can't share because we'd probably get sectioned. Yeah, literally. But... I feel like if I was to share some bits and pieces of what's gone on the past few months, I probably would get sectioned. I have been called a psychopath numerous times. Yeah, but you're not a psycho. Do you know what? This annoys me, right? And I feel like speaking to all the girls out there, when you're called a psycho, lads will like tell you, oh, you're a bit of a psycho. But we've got great intuition as women. Mm. So we know when something's kind of off. Mm. And then when you get called a psycho, then you find out the shit that this fella's been doing. And he's just trying to play with your mind. Yeah, it's like, it's like you know when you've got that gut feeling about your boyfriend or the person you're speaking to and they're being a bit off. Yeah. For example, been speaking to this guy recently, very fit, scouse. Um, I had a gut intuition. Is that yeah. the word, intuition? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, intuition. So I had a gut intuition that he was a lot younger than what he was telling me he was, right? Because obviously yeah. you can tell if someone's a bit immature. Yeah. Right? Because they can't fully hold a decent conversation. Mm. All they want to talk about is sex, sexual innuendos and just whatever, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, one of them ones where you're yeah. like, I'm just getting in the shower and they're like, Oh, send oh, me a pic. Send me a pic. And oh. it's like, what? Are you... F are you Ugh. Are you 16? For fuck's sake. Delete Snapchat right now. Honestly. Like, I, my main communication is not going to be through Snapchat. No. I'm not 15. That's but big. anyway, I had this gut intuition and I Googled it, didn't I? Yeah, you I did. I Googled his age because I thought, I think he's lying. And I asked him numerous times, how old are you? And he went, I'm 21. 21, 22, can't remember what number. 22, he said. Yeah, he said he was 22, right? And I normally date 30 year olds and above because I've been told by many people that the best shags are men in their 30s because they've got loads of experience. Exactly. But 100%. I Googled it and my gut was right. He was making me feel like I was going insane when actually he's 20. What a dick. Yeah. Like, do you know what annoys me as well, right? It's like, Lads, well, I mean, it, I say it annoys me, but it's just science. Lads <laughs> are basically, they mature way later than women. Yeah. So like you could be dating a 30 year old, but it's actually like your mindset when you were like 20. Yeah. So it's so annoying. Like Makes love sense. love older men. Yeah, fine. Obviously better for a shag. But like, how old do we go to get a real mature fella yeah. who's got his head on his shoulders? I'm not going to shag a 50 year old. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think that's pushing it too far it for is. me, personally. I mean, whatever floats your boat on that, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, but, just not for me. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just, I don't know. I'm in my 20s, you're in your 20s, right? And I think yeah. it's 
it's acceptable. And do you know what? I deeped it the other day. Mm. I was actually deeping it because we always speak about guys. We always mm. speak about being in relationships, getting heartbroken, getting yeah. ghosted. And <sighs> I know it's just, people always say to me, right, why don't you just stay single? Why don't you just work on you, right? But when I'm talking to someone, it isn't minor. If you actually deep it, right, and, yeah. and I'm gonna I'm gonna go deep right now, guys, right? So buckle your seatbelts up. If you're talking to someone, of course you're gonna get emotionally attached. Yeah. Because women, and some men, have got to think about what I do anyway. I don't know if I'm a bit of a weirdo. I think about, right, are they a good dad? Um, what are their backgrounds like? What are their friends like? Because if yeah. they're hanging around with people that are massive playboys, they're probably going to be one. Because if you're in a situation and you're around certain people, mm. you develop their traits, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you're going to marry this person for the rest of your life, right? Yeah. You're going to have kids with this person. If you have kids with this person, it's going to tie you to them forever. So yeah. it's like, do I really want to be tied down to a psycho? And when I deeped it like that, like getting in a relationship with someone... It's actually quite scary. It is scary. Like, it's the biggest thing... You literally said this to me as well the other day. ...in the world. Like, do you know what? I feel like I really do want a relationship, but I love kind of being selfish with my time as well. So, but it is, it is literally, you're signing your life away. Yeah. Kind of. Because you... you, 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 you do you want kids? I... Do you know what? I think... I'm very independent as a person mm. and I like being able to travel whenever I want. Like, I'm 27 and, like, yeah, I may oh, want kids. Fucking hell. Uh, fuck you. Fucking hell. Absolutely ill. fuck off. <laughs> You're going to be pushing Whoa. on soon. You're going to be pushing Whoa. on. But I think if I met the right person, I probably would want kids. Mm. But I haven't met the right person yet. Yeah. Well, Just I think... thought I did. <laughs> clearly haven't. And you clearly ghosted. haven't. <laughs> clearly haven't. Clear, yeah, clearly haven't. Do you know what I mean? do you think being 27 puts pressure on you to to want kids like do you get pressure yeah. off like family friends yeah like not so much of family that much but when I go home like my two sisters are in relationships for like the past few years and mom and dad are like so like you're 27 what's going on and I'm, I'm like come here and that's I when can't... you're like I'm a lesbian yeah <laughs> do you know what I mean Shock. maybe I should be because I feel like I can barely find a, a good fella they're all fuck boys. Where do fellas. you think you're going wrong though? I don't know. Maybe it's just the type of fellas that I date. I literally don't know. Like, I literally go for fellas who have ruined my life written all over them. Mm. So that they, they they ruin my life. Do you think your expectations when you date are a lot higher than what they should be? Yeah. I say that, yet I'm always then the mug. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll, like, have really high expectations and these fellas will be so fit and, like, sexy and really good in bed. And I'm like, oh, this is it. And then they just sell me a dream and then they kind of just yeah do nothing yeah. else after. And I'm just like, right, okay, well, now I'm kind of emotionally attached. Do you think you go more for the materialistic side, like, looks yeah. over than personality? Because I think you do. I think I do. I think it's like, before I did Too Hot to Handle, no joke, it was like 90% looks, 10% personality. And then when I came off, it's like 68% looks. 68? Yeah. Not 69? Yeah, 69. Ah! 69% looks and 31%? Yeah. Yeah? Quick maths. <laughs> um, yeah, but I feel like I go for a little bit for personality now. Okay, good. Yeah, which is good. I'm not yeah. that shallow, you guys. I'm well. not that shallow. Yeah, I just go. You're the opposite. Person. Yeah, I prefer personality over looks. Yeah, I can get with a manta and fall in love within a week. Yeah, I if know. If he can hold down a conversation, listen. If you can hold down a conversation with me and you've got banter and you don't make me mm. feel weird, then I'll I'll marry you next week. Yeah, that's that is important to be fair. Yeah, it I is think really having important. the banter is like massively important. Well, tell me everything that's gone on since the last time you were on the podcast. Oh, have God. you had any? Any dick appointments? I've had a few dick appointments since then. All right. But, oh my Good God, girl. before the podcast, I ha I don't think I had sex for six months. <gasps> no, you were celibate. I was celibate. Well, She's guys, not celibate anymore. I'm not celibate. She's now a massive slag. I broke the, oh, not the code, broke the... Broke the seal. The seal, yeah, no. broke the seal, yeah. Broke the minge? Broke, broke the minge seal. Yeah. Yeah, fuck it. Um, but yeah, so I've had a few dick appointments, but now 
I feel like I'm back to square one, guys. It's feast or famine. It is literally feast no, or famine. No, it is. I, had, I have fat feast mm. after my famine era. Which is when you talk to loads of guys yeah. once and they pop up. Because you always notice that in, in short periods, you'll they be talking come. to loads of men and then you get flustered and overwhelmed. Yeah. And then it's the famine. Like, but now I feel like I'm back in famine stages. Oh. I haven't had sex in since August. So I think I'm going back to famine and I'm not okay about it. Oh no. I know. But do you know what I think it is? I think it's feast because you give off this energy when a fella's texting you and you're like confident about it and you're like, yeah, this is amazing. And then more people come because the energy you give out. Well, what I'll do then is I'll create loads of fake accounts and then message you off the fake accounts and be like, cool, yeah, look at that yeah. big batty. Big bunda, Nicole. Well, Back it up, back I it up. I literally <laughs> don't have big bunda, so that's a complete lie. But anyway. Wide load coming through. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do think it's the energy you give out, maybe. Yeah. Because it I is so true. I heard the other day that apparently, and I don't know if this is true, guys, so please do not come at me if this is wrong. I heard it the other day on TikTok. Right? I get all my information on TikTok. It's like yeah. the BBC News for me. <laughs> I love it. It's the contraceptive pill, right, makes your body think that it's pregnant. I've seen this as well. And then when you're on the pill compared to when you're off the pill, you attract different men. What? Is that true? That is true, yeah. <gasps> no. Oh, my God. So basically, I've just asked one of the producers, Palama, if this is actually true. And she was like, well, yeah. So basically, when you take the pill, a contraceptive pill, your pheromones change, yeah? So when you come off the pill, you might be less attracted to your partner. So maybe I should go on the pill... Thought you were already on the pill. I haven't been on the pill in like two months. But I was. I was on the pill. When you were having sex? Yeah. But there's no need now because I'm celibate again. You're not. You're just not having sex. Yeah, true. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's not for a choice, Nicole. No, all right. Like, (laughs) all right. Jesus outing me for fuck's sake. Um, But what's pheromones get? I'm sure you can get pheromone spray. Really? Do you know what? This is actually disgusting. But I see this on TikTok too. Apparently, I can't remember what it's called. But if you put your your hand in your, like, rub it on your minge and then, like, wipe it on your neck, it's like a pheromone and it attracts more guys to you on a night out. Well, but you're a BV. You definitely should not do oh, that. I don't have BV. <laughs> I don't have BV no more. I have cystitis. Oh, OK. I actually have cystitis. Sat here right now. I'm really in pain. I know you are, honey. Bless I know. you. Well, I'm in the feast right now. I, you are in the feast. I am in the feast. I could not I'm more talking jail. to at least four or five different men. <sighs> Can you give me tips? Not slept with any of them. No, you one actually of, No, haven't. one of them I have. Oh, it yeah, was, you have. It was a one-night stand. Yeah. It was a very nice one night. It wasn't just a, oh, yeah, come and have sex with me. It was like, we went out on a night out. Yeah. These guys were on our table. I started speaking to him. We were dancing all night. It was really cute. Then we went back to yours and then we were texting. And he said, well, why don't you come over for a cuddle? And we did. One thing led to another. And then A cuddle, guys. Yeah. I'm going to be quite careful cuddle. with what I say because I've actually got my dad in the room, guys. Yeah. It's awkward. <laughs> but, yeah, he's come on a, a father-daughter work trip today. <laughs> so we've got to be a little bit PG with the content. But, yeah, I'm in the feast. You are. It's a bit overwhelming. Any tips? Um... Any tips? I feel like two of us are... Do you know what I always say? We're just is different. that we're complete opposite when it comes to men. You're like so f- full on lovey-dovey. Like, I want to have kids with them like, within the first week. Literally. And then I'm so like closed off, like very careful, mm. very picky about certain things. And then like sometimes no, emotionally I've noticed unavailable. With you. No, I've noticed with you, yeah. Oh God. If you don't mind me saying. I don't care. When we're out and you're talking to a guy, you've got this attitude <laughs> of like, like, cause you are so sweet and innocent, yeah. And you do not sleep about. I know. Right? But you give this attitude when you're talking to guys that's very like bougie. That, <gasps> do I? Yeah. It's almost like you put on a mask <gasps> and it's like, it, that's the wall. That's the barrier. Oh because you're God. like, I'm going to make him think that I'm bougie or not bougie, but I'm going to make him think that I am hard to get. Yeah. With, I always do with that. With my body language and my attitude, yeah. just so he doesn't walk all over me and take the piss out of me. Yeah, I've that, that is actually that. so true. That's mm. mental. Mm. That's so crazy. Like, I don't even realise that I'm doing that. But you mm. have said that to me before. But now I think about it, like, that is very true. Because mm. I feel like I don't want to be so, like, 
Like you let your wall down. I never do. But what I love about you is you always wear your heart on your sleeve. Yeah. Like I'm so tough with trying to get past that. Mm. But I think that's why we work so well because we balance each other yeah. out. Like I'll be like, Chloe, come on, don't be naive about this. And then you'll be like, Nick, come on, like you need just, to put out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, put out a little bit. <laughs> give, give him just some let emotion. Him put it in your ass. Yeah, literally. Just, just, just do, do it. anal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, has your type changed since you were last on the podcast? Like, what kind of dark guys are you talking to, dating to at the moment? I know you're in a famine. I am in the famine. But has your type changed? I don't. Uh... Not no. really. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it hasn't. But I do think I need to change it. And I have said this numerous times. Like, I do realise I need to change my type. You've got to put the action in Nick. I know, but where do I start, Clo? Like, I just... Ugh, I don't where even do you know find your fellas? Instagram homepage. Because I do. Mm, sometimes. But yeah. also through friends and nights out. Yeah. And a lot of them are in the industry and I don't want to date anyone in the industry. Every single guy that you have dated lesson. and whatever has been in the industry. I know. And it's because these are the people I'm always surrounded about. about surrounded around. On mm. nights out and all that. So, I don't know. I just need to change my type. Go for a fella who's doing finance in Canary Wharf. No. Why? That just sounds really boring. I mean, it, yeah, it Sorry does. to anyone that does finance in Canary Wharf, but... What? I, yeah. If someone said to me, oh yeah, I do finance, I'd be like, you're not... A, yeah, no. I don't... It's not th- a bit of me. Yeah, I feel like we're not really made to be with someone who no. does a nice job I like I was that, like, but... just come out of prison. Yeah. For parking fines. For, for parking fines. I live okay. on an estate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is right up your alleyway. <laughs> yeah, that's a my... A bad boy. Yeah. Bad boy turned good, though. What's but that But that's Rihanna not song? true. That's um, not a thing. Yeah, it is. It's not. It's one of the guys I'm talking to at the minute. Yeah, but Chloe, you've only been talking to him for about a week. He no, will not... No, 24 turn. hours. Right, okay. last night. Yeah, ground. He's not going to turn good. There's always going to no, be an has. element. Okay, fine. He came out of prison eight years ago and he's just started his own business. Okay, fair. So he's all right, I think. I mean, bad boy in know. terms of like a, like a fuck boy though and stuff. Yeah. I don't like know. everyone thinks, oh, I can change him. Like I always think that you can't. Right. So for me, I know that if I see a guy that's 10 10, but he is fairly smaller than me, mm. I now know that that's a boundary I don't want to cross. Like I can't get with anyone that's really smaller than me. 5 11 is are. my max. I know they all are, they but all I, are. That's, that's my next step to changing my type. Okay. Instead of being on that hamster wheel of letting boundaries slip. Yeah. I know it's not going to work out because really, what are my motives for getting with this person? Because if I'm not going to marry him, what the fuck is the point? That is so true. But also have a bit of fun. No, because... Are you looking for marriage right now? I don't think you... You do I want am. kids in a few years. Though, I want kids when I'm like 26, 27. That is my worst nightmare. That's your age. Yeah, that is... Imagine me having... Like, I'm sorry, like, I to bring this up. But I was, I was right talking, now. like, with your dad earlier about Brussels sprouts. <laughs> no, what was it? Broccoli sprouts. Broccoli and how you have to nurture them. And I said, come here, I can't get a cat or a dog because I don't have the responsibilities to even take care of that. But maybe the first step is getting broccoli sprouts and taking care of the broccoli sprouts. <gasps> then I might be able to have kids in about 10 years. But that's the first step. You need to look into getting your eggs frozen, Nick. Yeah, maybe I, I don't should. know what the timeline is. You might be running out of time. Oh my God, Chloe. <laughs> Why would you say that? Don't put that out into the universe. I'm not being your I'm fucking only, surrogate. You can get back. I'm fucked. only 27. That's not that old. No, it's not. <laughs> you cheeky bitch. I'm joking. Could you imagine me You can be kids? homeless tonight. You're not going to stay in my flat with this attitude. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'd be a good mum. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. Um, I asked some people... I asked the banging crew on Instagram to send in some questions. Right. Some of them I couldn't use. <laughs> Why? Because Too explicit. They, they were very explicit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. Um, so I've got a few questions. Okay, go on. From the banging members. Hit me. Baby, <clears> one <throat> more time. <laughs> I mean, these are quite explicit too, but they're not as deep. As deep. What's your favourite sex position? Oh, it's either, either doggy or missionary because I love kind of being lazy sometimes. So like lying, lying on my back is Same. just great. Spud me. Yeah. But yeah, either or, doggy Same. or missionary. Literally. How do you know if you really are in love with someone? 
I think the mask in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> right. This attitude needs to be fucking dropped. You cheeky bitch. I mean, I don't know either. Yeah. No, I think you do. Yeah, you I have do, yeah. Been. Yeah. Um, I don't know because I don't think I've ever been in love. I think I've lost it. Yeah. So much. But I don't think I've ever been in love, love. Mm. So, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> It'll come. Oh. Just go to more psychic readings. Yeah, like the psychic. She loves told, the psychic readings. The psychic has told me the one is going to be American and a sports player. So if he's like an American NBA player, I am going to be cheated on for the rest of my life. I so know, that's it? really good. Oh, don't marry a Tristan. I know. But two media or two psychics have told me that. Fucking hell. I know, mental. Wow. When I moved to America. <gasps> but yeah. But yeah, I don't know what it feels like to be in no. love. Lost, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, <clears throat> what does it feel like to be in love? I mean, I've been in love once or twice and you don't care if they fart in your face. You yeah. don't care if they're having a shit and you're in the bath. Yeah. You don't care if they're in bed and they accidentally shot and a bit gets on you. It's <laughs> like, you're that in love that they could literally shit in your mouth and you wouldn't blink like you'd just eat it that is amazing because you love every part of them even their pee particles that's mental mm. when am i gonna find that i don't know <laughs> when am i gonna find someone that i like them shitting in my mouth <laughs> i don't know <laughs> what the hell i don't know if any that nba players <laughs> would do that but <laughs> sure we'll see but yeah that's what love is for me oh that's so cute i know that's so cute next question are you seeing anyone at the moment no I'm not seeing anyone at the moment, unfortunately. I feel like so I would what like... what is it then? Have you been I, ghosted or what? So someone who I was onto in the past for like a few years on and off, got back chatting to them and then came back from a holiday that he was also on, not together, but he was living in there in Ibiza. And um, was like, yeah, I'll get back onto you when I'm back, we'll meet up. And like... I heard nothing. But, he, like, I'm so confused. How like, rude. feeding me loads of shit about how he wants to be with me, give it another go, and then just What's his ghost- address? And then gets ghosted. What's his address? I know, should we go? I'm going to go just, find him. Yeah, go knock on the door. But I just think, like, this is what drives me insane about men, is when they feed you the world and tell you everything you want to mm. hear because they know how to get into your brain and yeah. how it works. Yeah. And then they just... Snap it all away from yeah. you. I don't have time for any of that shit anymore. No. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm an independent woman. Woo. And I don't want to be dealing with that. Like, I need to find the one. So if the one is out there, I don't know what you look like. Well, if you're, you know, tall, tanned, tattoos. Well, she's very fucking... Bit of a bad boy, then yeah. But like, I just hate when people do that. Mm, so no, I'm not seeing anyone, basically. I think I'm quite guilty of that, though, to be honest. But then, do you know what? Recently, I've cut someone out of my life that I've been speaking to a li- for a little while now, and I really liked him. The one from Liverpool. Yeah. Um, He was really good looking, had a good head on his shoulders, good family background. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to give him a chance. Even though he said he was a lot... He said he was older than what he, he originally was. Mm. It was almost like... He, he must have thought he had me wrap around his little finger. Because yeah. he then stopped putting in the effort. He, he started messaging me one-liners. Every time I'd call him, wouldn't answer. That's fine. But I'd ring him. I'm on a night out. I'll call you later. Then he wouldn't call me. And yeah. then the next day, he'd message me at 2, 3 in the afternoon. But we had gone from speaking every night on FaceTime, falling asleep on FaceTime together. We started off with that level I of intensity. That weird. Sorry. To, I know, but I love it. Like, what the fuck? Fine so me. we started with that and then ended with him just putting in no effort. And, and I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to cut you out. And I did. And I haven't spoke to him in about a week now. God. And he's messaged me every single fucking day since. He even FaceTimed me <sighs> twice earlier. And I ignored it because I thought, so now you want to put the effort in. Good. Now I'm not putting the effort exactly. in. Exactly. It's a psychological thing. You want Once what you guys think have. they've got you on a fish hook, mm-hmm. they're like, now I can go entertain other girls because I'm going to keep you there. Yeah. Because I know you're there. Well, hang on a second. I'm not like any other regular bitch. All go. right. I'm Chloe Beach. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not having it. Good. But I do miss him. No, and I know you do. But 
It's you always want what you can't have. I know. And fellas love their ego being fed. Mm. So like, and like obviously everyone does, but like I feel like more so fellas by having like a girl there who they've got wrapped around their finger. Mm. I'm sure this guy who I was talking to thinks the same. But not anymore now because I'm not standing for someone who doesn't treat me the way I want to be treated now. Mm. But go you for doing that. And are you going to message him? No. No. <laughs> what is that? And then he's like, are you? <laughs> do you, do you Does he? Yeah. Is Does he? Is that an Irish thing? That's weird. My mum goes, yeah, I am my eyeball. What? <laughs> is that a thing? Yeah. Maybe it's a cork thing. Are you? It's a fucking weird thing. <laughs> it's very Please original. Never do that. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm single. Are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? So that you going up to, what does it mean? Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? It's like, are you sure? And then you're like, I have my eyeball. What? <laughs> Maybe it's a cork thing. Maybe no one gets that. So basically what she's doing for anyone listening on on in the car or on audio is she's putting her finger under her eyeball and stretching it so yeah. her eyes looks like it's popping out and yeah. she's going are you sure? <laughs> have you not seen anyone do that before? No I thought it was sign language or something. No. Is this is made up cork language. <laughs> yeah. It's just weird. No I love it. Stuff it's like that original. is why cork isn't on the map. Uh, right I'm just not even going to address the fact you said that. <laughs> anyway music. Yeah. <laughs> is there a relationship you want to write a song about that you haven't yet? Yes. Okay. Without saying uh, the name. I haven't written a song about my ex from two years ago. Okay. Who conned me <gasps> yeah, out of money. We know this one. And The user. Yeah, the user. And who basically told all the press about us when I wanted it kept private and pretended it wasn't him. All this shit. I haven't written a song about him yet. Well, your mum even knew. Yeah, my mum knew. Fucker. And I told my mum nothing about this. Like, we literally went away on holidays to the Amalfi Coast, second date. This is me being bougie and extra. I mean, now I you're sounding like me. Yeah, I know. But when I really like someone, like, I want to be with them the whole time. Good. So, yeah, went there. He told me he was broke a day in. So I'm thinking, why the fuck have you come to the Amalfi Coast? And then asked me for loads of money and then literally made me pay for everything. I don't mind that. That's uh -huh. fine. But he would rack up bills on bills on bills and wanted like a premium room. Come here. The room was fucking stunning beforehand. But no, he wanted the most expensive one, whatever. And then but brought him back home. Your mum picked up on this energy. Yeah, brought, brought him back home to mum. Told her none of this. And then she was like, this is our third date. He met the family. This shows how intense it got. Um, brought him back to mom and she was like, I can tell he's using you. Like, <gasps> From he, what though? From what? Because he would forget his wallet or in the car, had to get mom and dad to pay for things, had to get me to pay for things, all this shit. And like how he was acting in his demeanour, like mom obviously picked up on it. Mm. So then, yeah, I just ended it and then that was it really. And then he went on to try and date one of my friends after on TV and I was like, you little fuck. <sighs> And tried to shag me that night. I said, you can suck my dick. But yeah. Good girl. Yeah. What well, was the question? Um, <laughs> really went no, deep. It, it oh was, yeah, it's, it's about music. the song. Yeah. So so I haven't, written, haven't written a song about that yet. No, I haven't. And I think the reason I haven't written a song is because I'm over it. But yeah. I do want to write a song. Because you need to be in your feels, don't you? Mm. It's almost like when you're an actor, when you get given a role, you have to method act sometimes. Yeah. So you have to embody that character. Yeah. So let's embody this character right now. Right? Yeah. You're with him, he's fucking you over. Yeah. I'm your mum. Let's start the chorus. <clears throat> right. Start right. the chorus. I can tell he's not that into you. He's forgot his you... wallet in the car. What a dirty, dirty dog. <laughs> Why don't you fuck him up the arse? <laughs> That's great. I think that'd go in the chart. Yeah. Continue. And add a little. Dubstep, yeah. Well, you need to sing your part no, first. No, you're, you're singing your bit. I've just done okay. my bit. Wait. I don't love you enough because... Wait, what did you say about poo? Um, poo I, particles. No, <laughs> I don't love your poo particles. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't ever let you shit in my mouth. <laughs> no, please, I'm <laughs> 
I don't love you enough because I, I would do. never let you shot on my leg in bed. I wouldn't let you spoon me and cuddle me and give me pink eye. It's sick. Mm-mm-ms. We'll go into the studio and make that a song. 100%. But yeah, that's the only thing I haven't written about, really. I write about all oh, lads. I actually wrote a song about you, though, the other day. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I wrote a song about you. And I wrote a song about how you're a complete fucking bitch. No, I'm joking. I wrote a song about, like, how great a friend you are. Oh, Nick. Yeah, I know. How cute. Can you sing a little bit? No, because I want to finish. We've got another bit to go and then I'll show it to you. Oh, if you remember just one one or two no, things. No, I'm not going to show it to you until it's finished. Oh. Yeah, but that's cute. Is it like, Chloe, you're my love. Chloe, you're my best friend. Chloe, you're my everything. No, it's not. Nothing like that. That was really shit and it's actually really good. So you just have to wait and see. But yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, well, fuck you too. I'm not promoting it on socials. You don't have to. You can get fucked. Fuck you. I'm walking out of this podcast. Right, so what bit of advice would you give to someone in a toxic relationship who doesn't have the strength to leave? Now, this question is for you. Yeah. I think... This is what my recent song, Say La Vie, was about, is that like when you're in a toxic relationship, you do have to love yourself more than that person. Mm. Um, And I think I learned that with that certain someone that I had, like I literally lost myself. I locked myself in my apartment for four days, crying, didn't want to talk to anyone. I was in such a bad mental place. And then I like had an epiphany being like, what the fuck am I doing? Mm. Like this person has completely drained my energy. Like I've lost out on a bit of work now because I've literally just been sat in this apartment. You need to look at yourself in the mirror. You and lost be your like, peace of mind. Yeah, literally look at yourself in the mirror and be like, just feed yourself compliments and like get your confidence up because your confidence will be ruined if you are in a toxic relationship. Mm. And... Yeah, and just keep giving yourself compliments. Write down what you're grateful for every day. That's what I love doing. And just learn that you're way more important than this person. Yeah, Yeah. it's good to put people's needs before yours, but in toxic relationships, absolutely Mm, fucking not. Get out. And I think the main thing for you as well is, not always, but most of the time, we both, we grass it up. When we're in a relationship that we think is toxic, Mm. it's almost very normalised to keep it in and to not... <clears throat> speak about certain things that have gone on in relationships because I've been with guys in the past that have said, why would you tell your friends that? Don't you dare tell your friends that I made you cry because then they're going to think that I'm abusing you. Yeah. Well, hang on a second. Of course I'm going to fucking tell my yeah. friends. Because if they don't know, they don't see the truth. Exactly. They don't see what's going on outside of this bubble that I'm in. So I think it's really important to not isolate yourself and to speak to your close friends and family. Like my dad, I was in a really toxic relationship. Yeah. I was crying all the time. I was putting myself in dangerous situations. He was mm. driving recklessly, trying to scare me. And he almost got a buzz off the, the, the pain he was, he was giving me. It was awful. Um, I remember I went home once and I didn't tell my dad any of this. Yeah. He knew I was upset and crying I think it's really important even if you don't tell them to kind of just voice certain things that have happened but my dad knew instantly and he was like Chloe I know that he's mentally abusing you because Mm. you are not the same person you were before yeah you weren't you're acting differently you're crying all the time your mood's dropped your sleeping patterns changed you don't want to be around your friends you don't want to be around your family and that isn't normal for you Mm. so being around people that know you inside out as a person is really important when you think you're in a toxic relationship because then they can show you that you have lost yourself because I think when you're in that space where you're losing yourself you don't realise you don't realise it but like even like in times when I've like not felt my best like you've always picked up on it and I wouldn't really pick up on different things and you're like Nick like I think that you should do this or do that but when you're in that bubble you don't realize the things that are happening is like really bad Mm. and like even like recently with a situation you were going through and it was quite toxic you thought half the shit was normal and you Mm. said to me and I was like nearly had a heart attack yeah I was like what the hell because it was going on for so long and I feel like with toxic relationships if the other person is putting your self-esteem down Mm. like I read a school report yesterday right because my mum, basically, I'm going through the stages of, of asking for professional help because of ADHD and stuff like that and, like, certain things that can help me in my day-to-day life achieve yeah. more because sometimes I get stuck in this hole of... I can't even go back to my flat sometimes because mm. it's that unorganised in my head that it puts pressure on me and I can't cope and it overwhelms me, right? So I just stay I at my that. mum's. And I went through this school report and in my school report it said... 
like my teachers in primary school, Chloe's self-esteem is extremely low. Wow. For a kid to be having school reports saying that my self-esteem is extremely low, what the fuck? Like, what? I even cared about what people thought about me when I was young. I've always seeked validation in my relationships, yeah. right? And that's one thing that I have worked on mm. and that I don't do anymore. Yeah, you Maybe don't. in certain friendships and maybe in certain crowds, right? I've always yeah. got different masks on. I try to be vigilant about it. But one thing that I've really noticed, and every time, I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. I probably shouldn't say it just in case it doesn't come true, but... I've got 1111 on my arm, yeah, because I love spirit numbers. Mm. I'm really big with, when I see repetitive numbers, I know and I believe in my head that it's signs, yeah? Yeah. I mean, take take that how you want. You might think I'm just needing to be sectioned, but it really helps me just channel in that, right, I'm going to take this moment to make a wish. Yeah. So every time we see 1111 on FaceTime, I'm but like, oh my God, wish. Nick, it's 1111, make yeah. a wish. And I close my eyes and the one thing that I, I've been wishing for for the past few months is please help me to be myself unconditionally and unapologetically around men. Oh my God. Because I push myself in when I'm around men because I'm scared I'm going to push them away if I'm being myself. Yeah. But actually, I don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah, good. And when I started pushing myself in and st stopped men from seeing who I really am, that also pushes my self-esteem down mm. because I'm not being myself and I know I'm not being myself. Yeah. So then I'm not going to feel good enough. That's so true. Which is just mad, isn't it? And I feel like I do that as well. Mm. Like I think like having a mask on for men is something that we both do mm. and it's not healthy. But it's the awareness. I know. Yeah, at least we're aware of it now. Yeah. It's something we need to work and on. I'm going to pick you up on your shit. Yeah, I'm going to pick you up, you up on your shit. Yeah. So if there's anyone listening that has a best friend that does exactly what we do, or if you do yeah. it, have this conversation at home with your friends tonight. I'll give them a call and just say, listen, I think I push myself down when I'm around men because I'm scared that they're not going to like my energy. Yeah. Well, well, banging is telling you, fuck it. Just fuck it. Fuck it. Just be yourself. Have Glow. a shit in front of them. Yeah. Do everything. Fart in front of them. Just don't shit in their mouth yet. Not yet. Not until you're in love. Not until they love you. So that is how I'll know when I'm in love, if I shit in their mouth and they enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, we've got one more question. Okay. And then we're going to go into the advice segment. Okay. All right. So, obviously you're an artist. Mm-hmm. Have any musicians slid into your DMs? Yes. But this is the thing, right? These, <clears throat> these musicians, I didn't know them, but they're like DJs from Australia and singers from like Australia and Germany and stuff, but I didn't know them. But the main one, like a few little story guys. So is this an exclusive? This is an exclusive. I think I've told one magazine this ever, but so it's not an exclusive then. You know, right. you know. Well, okay, yeah, but like in in terms of podcast. Carry on, carry on. So when in 2016 I went to America, and I was living in San Diego, and we went to a club there. I know this story. Yeah, we went, this is hilarious, right? We went to a club there. Now there was 14 of us living in a one bed motel. We just finished uni. We had no money. There was one bed and it was 11 lads and three girls. We're all friends, right? The lads did you slept just in there. Every, did you just fucking No, no, no. Oh. No, we actually, we were all really good friends. Oh, okay. But I did fancy one guy and I did fuck him a year later. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, but the lads literally had to sleep in their suitcases. Like we were so poor living on $1 a day. Went to this club anyway. It, Tiesto was playing. And they were like, oh, do you want to come behind the DJ deck? Uh, and me, yeah. me and my friend were like, fuck yeah. So we went behind there. And then he's like, all the girls are proper glam. I'm literally hung over as fuck, wearing like cargo trousers and a crop top and like no makeup, bit bronzer, that's it. And he's like, where are you from? Tiesto says. And I'm Tiesto? Like, yeah, and I'm like, Ireland. She's like, I love Ireland. And I'm like, oh, real. And then he's like, oh, do you want to come back to an after party? What, with so, Tiesto? So myself and my friend are like, yeah. So it's in his hotel room. So we end up going to the hotel room. The hotel room's like half the size of the studio. Okay. And he's just on decks. And there's four, no, five other girls and then another DJ. 
And then me and my friend Aoife were just sat in there, just had some whispering angel. And we were like, oh, this is so awkward. These girls are so bait. We're just going to leave. Then Tiesta was like, no, you're not leaving. We'll kick everyone else out. <gasps> so he ended up playing the decks with me, my friend, and this other guy, Jekko. And then afterwards, when I tell you, like, it was so bizarre because I was working this job that I would get paid like $10 a day. Uh, literally. And Tiesta was texting me being like, I want to bring you and your friends to Vegas. So he ended up bringing us to Vegas. Fuck off! Right? Brought us to Vegas. Set us up in the MGM hotel room. We had backstage passes to all of his gigs throughout the week. It was fucking mental. Did you shag him? I didn't shag him. I kissed him. But okay. I didn't shag him. But he oh was trying to shag God. me. And I was like, no. Because I actually found out that he lied about his age. Uh, I've been there. And he, he was 49 at the time. He lied about his age, but he looked really young. He clearly has a really good fucking surgeon. He looked, <laughs> he looked about 30. And that's what I believe. Tell me he was 30. No. Um, so obviously the engine shag him. But yeah. <gasps> so that that was like the most insane was he story. Good yeah, he was. Was he like fair. tongues? Yeah. But like, not too tongy. Okay, I like that. Yeah, not it was like tongue-y. perfect. Okay. But now he's married, obviously. So whatever. Okay, but yeah. Yeah, so that's probably my most insane. Anyone big... else in the UK that would know about Quickfire? No, okay. not in the UK. No one big. Ah. Right. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I just want to apologise if you actually take the advice we give and you end up yeah. breaking up. But that's the worst case scenario. Yeah. The best case scenario is that you end up getting married and have six kids. Exactly. Yeah. I do think we give good advice. I think we fair. do. We just don't take we it. We don't take it, yeah. Right. Ready? Yeah. My girlfriend has hinted a couple of times that she wants to have sex with me, but I'm a virgin. Oh, And I'm kind of nervous, obviously. Yeah. How do I do it and how do I know when I'm ready? Thank you. Oh, bless. Have you ever taken anyone's virginity before? No. I have. So. Have you? Yep. Someone called Fabio. Fabio, Mm. was he Italian? My singing teacher's son. What? Yeah, I took his virginity. Oh my God, how was that? Um... It was actually really good. Was it? Yeah, it was really good. He knew where to put it. Yeah. Just wow. proud. But I think if she's your girlfriend and you've been together a little while, I think maybe just letting her know that you don't mind her being vocal about what feels good for her. Exactly. And don't be a perfectionist. Yeah. If you come within a couple of seconds, it's fine. Just it wait fine. and go again. Exactly. That's, that's the excitement of having sex with someone that's not lost their virginity before. Yeah. Because it's like, they're like rabbits. I feel like, Once yeah, just broke ask the skill, her. They just want to carry on. Yeah, yeah exactly. Go on then. I think ask her what she likes. Mm. Be very vocal about it. But obviously you're going to be nervous. Yeah. But like, Take a couple thing of is cons. though, with, with fellas though, I think it's so different because with girls, it's fucking painful. Yeah. Like popping your cherry is sore. Oh, it's so sore. Like so sore. But with fellas, it's totally fine. Yeah. You don't have to pop your cherry essentially or like stretch your hole yeah exactly because that's what we did yeah it really hurt that really did I hurt. must have loosened quite a bit because it doesn't hurt anymore yeah same I'm like is it in same <laughs> it hurts though because I feel like here is quite small for me so yeah. big dicks I can't take no same but I don't know why that is but I yeah mean, be vocal with her be vocal with her and just don't be afraid to talk yeah like, eat, like if you go Foreplay, the most important thing. <gasps> Better most, than sex in my eyes. I'm telling you now, it's the most important thing. Yeah. Just play with her a little bit. Take yeah. it slow and then just put it in. Just right? lick her minge. But, and then Bob's mop, your uncle. Mop, 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 mop. Yeah. Bob's your uncle then. How do you know, how would he know when he's ready? I mean, you'll just know. I think you're always going to be a bit scared. Just fucking do it. How should Literally he do it? Set the scene. Just, right, set the scene. I mean, it depends on what age you are, but I would have a drink or two. Hopefully to, legal. If you're legal enough to drink. Have a drink, a beer or something. I mean, no, legal to nerves. have sex. If you're not legal to have sex, don't do it. Yeah, exactly. Because I don't want to go to court. No, yeah, we're not getting involved with the do police Do not here. sue me. Um, but yeah, just set the scene a bit. Kiss her, get her on the bed, maybe watch a movie. Inside, before. outside? What? No, inside for the first time. Okay. Jeez, right. you can't be shagging in the woods to lose your virginity. All right. No, it has to be inside. On the bed, and then one thing leads to another. Touch your mange, give a little finger, little lick, and then there you go. Yeah. Stick it in. The most important thing for me as a woman is the aftercare. Because when, yeah. when you have sex with someone, guys always forget the aftercare. And that is the most important bit. When you finish, don't just get up and go to the toilet. Lay yeah. there. 
give her a cuddle, stroke her hair, give her a kiss. That felt really nice. Pay her a couple of compliments. That's so true. And then like nurture her. Yeah. And that will set the tone so she mm. doesn't feel used. Because there's been many times I've had sex before and I've just felt like used. you've literally just used my body to masturbate with. Yeah. And I, that's not okay. That is not okay. So if you like her and you love her and you want it to work, then even if the sex was shit and it was proper dead, at just least give you her stroked kiss. her hair afterwards. Yeah, give her a kiss, give her a cuddle. Do you know Spoon what I mean? her a bit. Maybe just kiss her And meow wear meow. a condom. That's very important. Very important, yeah. Wear a condom. Wear a condom. <laughs> so important. It, it, it is so important to wear a condom. Just don't wear two condoms. And as we say, we usually don't take our own advice, but... We do. I wear condoms. So do you. Yeah. You do! I know! I do as well. I know. We've had this conversation in the first episode. I just don't wear female condoms. What's that? It's like a condom you put inside a, a female. Oh, yeah, fuck that. You just use a, a ripped yeah. one. I use condoms all the time. You never have sex, you're lying. <laughs> you never have sex. <gasps> like, I never. No. I used to have sex so much before Too Hot to Handle. Yeah, it was Lana. What? Lana's changed you, mate. You're not the same woman I used to know. Fuck Lana. You're not somebody that I used to know, somebody. <laughs> right. But I really hope it works out, and I hope yeah. that you. Give her a good fucking pounding. <laughs> Let us know how it goes. <laughs> Let us know. Yeah. Watch a bit of porn. Oh, no, don't watch porn. No, that's no, the wrong advice. Don't watch complex. porn. That will give you a complex because it is not like that in yeah, the bedroom. Yeah, it's, it's not real. It's not real. No. They're paid actors. They are. Game anyway. time. <laughs> are you ready? So today's, today's game, we are going to be talking statistics Oh, around sex. Oh, okay. Right? True or false? Okay. Now, I don't know the answers. Okay. How do we know if it's real or not? Palama's going to tell us. Okay. All right? Yeah. So, have you got them up? Are we ready? First. Wait, question. sorry. What, what, what if we get it wrong? What do we do? Slap each other. <laughs> no, I'm not fucking slapping. You're not slapping me. Slap your tits. <laughs> you want to touch my tits to touch my tits. Touch your tits. You don't have to make an excuse to me. <laughs> um, what we do? I don't know. Do a over-exaggerate sex noise. Okay. Right. But a weird one, not a sexy one. Okay. Okay, right. <clears throat> the average female orgasm lasts 20 seconds. Uh, false. Um, does it? Wait, let me just think. False. What, the whole thing? False. No way. I'd say it lasts around five seconds. I would say like eight. Okay. What? What's the answer? It's true. Is it? Is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with us? It's not us, it's them. I, I agree. We're clearly not getting the right dick. I think it refers to, you know, you know, after you film, but it's still like, does that thing? Okay. Ah. So it's the sensitivity afterwards. So it's the actual, so the 20 oh. seconds isn't just the calm and the orgasm, it's the sensitivity of the clip afterwards. Yeah, 20 seconds no, sounds no, about no, right. No, it's when you're like... Pounding. Pulse, pulsating. Yeah, it's Tensing, like... it's like contractions, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the contractions last, last up to 20 wow. seconds. Wow. Yeah, I think, yeah. Okay. Sounds about right. Yeah. Right. We are turned off by people who smell like our parents. <gasps> Uh, <laughs> so awkward because my dad's in the room. I am turned off by... I mean, I would imagine so, yeah. But my dad actually bought Savage and my ex used to wear Savage. Oh, Darren. So that's just weird. <laughs> Darren. <laughs> when I broke up with him, I, all I could smell was him on my dad. Oh, no. It was just weird. Oh, no. What are you saying, true or false? True. So you're turned on by it? Oh, no, false. <laughs> I'm <not joking. laughs> No, we are turned off by people who yeah, smell our parents. Yeah, true. It has to be true. <gasps> it's false! Ah, Jesus, come off it. You're incest. Uh, <laughs> I answered the same fucking answer as you, you bitch. You're incest. I'm sorry. But there is this thing that you go for fellas who look like your parents. No. My that, dad's That butters. is a thing. That is a Everyone thing. Everyone fancies my dad, though. That is a thing. Darren. Everyone. Kerry Katona actually said, I would fuck your dad. No, she didn't. I'm lying. She didn't say fuck him, but she said she fancies him. Maybe this is how I marry into the Veach family. 
get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> that's taken. <laughs> right, I'm... Yeah, okay. That was a bit of a weird one. Yeah, I can't believe that's true. That's worrying. Nearly half of all men fantasise about someone else during sex. Now, if this is true... I'm going to be gutted. I'm, I'm going to walk out. <sighs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say false because if this is true... I'm going to have a complex the rest of my I bloody swear life. swear to fucking God, if this is true... I'll be so annoyed. I, I'm i licking minge the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm there with you. Right. Right, Palama. I don't know if I'm ready for this one, to be honest. It's false. It's false! Yay! Half of all women... I knew it, yeah. I don't mind if it's all women, yeah, because I do. I, I actually, do the exact yeah, same thing. Yeah, I'm I find the size about different men when I'm having sex with I someone. I have done that before as yeah. well. So I'm glad. Okay. I'm glad that you men don't fantasise about other people. I think it's because their brain capacity just can't actually... I agree. Like, ...think about anyone else other than their dick. That's so true. They At just think about their dick. That's it. It makes sense. But that's fine that we do it. They just can't do it. Yeah. I'm all about that. Same. I can do whatever. You can't do fucking shit. Right. One third of all women over 80 are still sexually active. Yes. I think that's true. I don't. I've met a few over 80. old horny birds in my time. A third, though. That's a lot. I mean, I'm not good at maths. You tell me what a, that is. A third is like, so you've got three. So 100% is made out of three sections. No, it's so bad. I'm describing this. <laughs> is it? Yeah. So a third is, is like one out of three. So 33% of people over 80. 33% out of 100%. Yeah. I think that's true. I don't. A, over 80. Okay. Think the hip It's true. Ah! It's true, see? Oh my god. Look at you with your fucking C in maths. I failed and I still got it right. How did you know I got a C in maths? Because you you went to a fucking private school. Yeah, I did for and like I two didn't. years. <laughs> yeah, anyway, can't so, believe that. So your nanny's probably still shagging. My nan's 94. She's definitely still shagging then. That mate, that makes me feel sick. She loves it, mate. She does drive a sports car. She's pretty fucking cool. She's pulling all the lads. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm still having sex over 80, though. Ring her after this. Yeah, but like, Nan, you still you, having sex? You, you love it. No, I just you call dick? her out on it. Because it's a fact. It's not that just is a, mental. It's a fact. Your nanny's still shagging. That's mental, though, if that is the case. I hope I'm like that. Yeah, I reckon. You'll definitely be like that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you are more likely to fall in love with someone if you meet them in a dangerous situation. I think that's true because Protection. your emotions everywhere and your adrenaline. Yeah. And sometimes your adrenaline can be mistaken for serotonin. I think that's my theory anyway. That is so intelligent. I know, isn't it? I've, I'm always told this. I'm very emotionally intelligent. Mm, what you, I do agree with that, to yeah. be fair. Do you think that's true But that was like intelligent, intelligent. Uh, true. I think it's true. It, it's true. Yeah. See? That makes sense, though. I should go on the chase. You should. If they You'd done be a sex really version. really good. Yeah. That's mental, though. But yeah, I do agree. Like, if someone was trying to rob you and oh then my this God. fellow was protecting you, you'd be like, oh, I'm in love. No, if someone tried to rob me, what if I fell in love with the person that was trying to rob me? That'd be weird. I feel like that would happen to you, though, because you love criminals. <laughs> yeah. 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 You'd be so like, that's why I like oh, ex-convicts. Take, take, take my watch, but also take my number. <laughs> Are you, you kidnapping me because you think I'm hot? <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, do you like me? Are you tying I, my hands because you want to kidnap me because you think yeah. I'm hot? Yeah, or is this like some kinky shit? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Is it because I'm your favourite? Why, why <laughs> did you pick me? <laughs> oh God. Right, men are just as likely to watch porn as women. What? Obviously. Yeah, obviously, they love men it. Men watch porn more so than women. Men are just as likely to watch porn as women. Yeah, because I think women watch porn just yeah. as much as men. I do too. Is it true? It's false. What? So 70% of men 70... compared to 33% of women. That Wait. watch porn. So 70% 70 as 70 of men watch porn and 30% of women watch porn. Well, that's abnormal for me. 30% is very low. Yeah. Surely so not. does that mean we're unique? I'd like to think so, yeah. Do you ever touch yourself? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay, okay, we'll leave it there because I don't talk about it too much. It's a bit weird. Yeah. Just as... It's not weird. No, sorry, that was weird. Me saying that was weird. It was not weird. No, it's it not weird. She's like my sister. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. 30%. That's very low. And you low. never change your bed sheets. Uh, yeah, and I, I do. And I stay in your bed all uh, the time. Yeah, you cheeky bitch. Yes, I do. I actually have got new fluffy ones that I put on yesterday. Oh, fluffy? All right. Yeah. Oh. 
You little <laughs> fuck. You are going to be homeless tonight, you cheeky bitch. <laughs> such a dick. I fucking love you. I love you, Cher. And I'm so glad that you came on. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. And you time. And um, I think we gave really good advice. I do too. Yeah. So if there's anyone that is wanting any advice from me yeah. or my guest, please message the banging Instagram, which is banging with Chloe V pod. And let us know your dirty secrets. Or yeah. anything that you want an opinion on or any toxic ex that you're trying to come back into your life. Or even if you're a virgin and you want to break the seal and you want our fucking expertise, then please right message us mm-hmm. and... Bob's your uncle. We'll try and not, we'll try, we'll try not to ruin your relationship. <laughs> no, we give good advice, Chloe. Yeah. But yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you soon. Banging with Chloe Veach is part of the Eve Podcast Network and a Forever Dog production. Executive producer, Tracy Soren. Development executive, Mariah Nicholas. Senior producer, Palama Kaufman. Producer, Ewan Newbigging Lister. Post producer and theme song, Brian Hevron Smith. Cover photo by Greg Bailey. Forever Dog Productions is Joe Cilio, Alex Ramsey, and Brett Boehm.